uh, study the excitability of the brain. So that if there is a patient coming in, for example, for pre-surgical evaluations and still on medication, then you can maybe we can monitor in the future these patients whether the excitability increases if we withdraw the anti-epileptic drugs and what is the right moment to do, for example, EG, fMRI uh, study or uh, then we can expect yeah. the seizures. But since one thing is sure, if a patient gets more seizures, then you have a higher excitability of the brain. That's, that's the thing. And so, so if you withdraw the uh, anti-epileptic drugs, you get seizures. So. Um, I thought I'll start over here, because this is the DMS uh, device that we use. Um, yeah, actually there are two devices which both can give a pulse, um, a current pulse towards this, uh, yeah. this coil. Um, when, the, uh, when you give a stimuli, so a pulse, a current will flow inside this coil. Um, when a current flows in a coil, you get a magnetic field, and the changing magnetic field uh, induces a current inside the head. And if you do it at the right spot, you, get a, you can get a current in the motor cortex. And if you get a current at the right spot in the motor cortex, you get a movement uh, in the thumb. Yeah. So we also make this headrest uh, on the chair. Because uh, subjects, uh, yeah, they, they do the they stimulate. If they, if they hear the something, they look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, we made this one because people then understand that they need to hold their head still. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, back to the TMS device over here. You see three numbers. I don't know if you can all see it. It's the uh, stimulus intensity of the device. Yeah, it's a percentage. So it's the max, the percentage of the maximum output that the device can get. Uh, so this is for the first device, so for the first pulse, for the second device, so for the second pulse, and this is the time that you have between the stimuli. So you can also give one if you put this on zero. But, mm -hmm. yeah, um, but we have uh, a couple of long protocols, uh, so it's a lot of work to adjust this manually all the time. Uh, so therefore we developed a GUI, uh, a graphical user interface, and it controls the TMS machine. So if you have a protocol with a lot of different values, <laughs> uh, you can just use this one and then it automatically runs the whole protocol that you want to use. So but in the clinic so. they do the motor evoke potential and then they have only 10 stimuli. But we had to do it together with the EEG and we have want to record the transcranial evoke potential. So you need to do at least 50 times with, the, uh, with yes. the, the periods in between of six seconds, so you can imagine that you can't do this. It's a long period. It's yeah. it a long period, so this yeah, is so different. It's really not used in the clinic yet, EEG. Mm -hmm. Stefan has uh, five electrodes on his head. Uh, CZ, SP1, SP2, FC1 and FC2, and a reference electrode. Only normally for demonstration. Only for demonstration, because yeah. normally we use 64 electrodes, yeah. but for demo purposes it was a bit much. So now we use uh, five electrodes. Um, yeah, then they go to this amplifier. It's a special amplifier that can be used for TMS uh, simulation because the TMS gives uh, artifacts. Uh, well, it, it also induces currents in the electrodes, so then you get a lot of uh, yeah, current in them and artifacts. So therefore you need a special amplifier, which is uh, this one. Uh, and then we have this program. Uh, over here you see CP1, CP2, FC1, FC2 and CZ. And this uh, is the uh, are the electrodes on his uh, thumb. Uh, yeah, if, <laughs> if he moves it, you can uh, see it clearly. Yeah. I mean, I already measured his resting motor threshold. It is a value, um, if... Uh, yeah, it's, it's the intensity over here uh, that you need to have 5 out of 10 uh, stimuli that, that his, his thumb reacts to. So the minimal intensity that has, has 5 out of 10 uh, positive reactions. And you base all other stimulation on this resting motor threshold because some people have a thicker skull, some have a uh, thinner skull, or the, the motor cortex is somewhat deeper, so it's harder to stimulate. So you base all everything on this resting motor threshold so that you can compare subjects. Uh, and now I will start with a reference measurement. It uh, is it at 120% uh, of the resting motor threshold that I measure. So then over here you can uh, observe what happens. You see a large uh, simulation artifact still when it starts. <laughs> yeah, you can see the simulation artifact, and after that, you can observe a map, a motor evoked potential, so the movement of his thumb. 
Servus, die Arche. Okay. Everybody convinced? That is what I said. And we had, it took quite a long time that they had an approval of the METC for the uh, healthy control sure. study and yeah. for the patient yeah. study, not because of this TMS, EEG, or MMOC, because it is clinically available, yeah. but especially because we also do the fMRI. And then also the well, healthy the controls okay. and uh, yeah. in combination with, with yeah. whole of anti epileptic yeah. drugs. Yeah. And the patients have to go for 45 minutes and also the healthy controls in the scanner and they thought that was a very long time but we showed that then you get stable results and uh, these yeah. things so that was the most difficult part.